Hey guys, welcome back to another Ferrari Formula One Evolution video illustrated with 118 scale die cast models. This is the 1997 F310B by Mini Champs with tobacco livery and was driven by Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine. The F310B is in fact a B spec of the 1996 F310 chassis, which from the last video we know is not a very good car. However, in 1997, Ferrari signed on Ross Braun, who was proficient on the technical side in his own right, but they also signed on Roy Byrne as chief designer, who, like Braun, had come over from the Benetton team, who had won championships in 1994 and 95. Of course, Ferrari already had Michael Schumacher and John Tott, thus rounding out the dream team. I'd like to quickly highlight John Tott and Rory Byrne because everyone will always give plenty of credit to Schumacher and Braun, but forget about the other two. John Tott was a workhorse. He put all the right personnel in place, he brought out the best from the entire team. Schumacher, who was known for his own work ethic, even said that his work ethic didn't compare to John Tott's. That's quite a statement. Then Rory Byrne was the guy behind the scenes that gave Schumacher some of the best cars in Formula 1 history. He easily can be considered one of the all-time great designers, and during his time with Ferrari could be stated as even better than Adrian Newey. Moving on to the car, it's easy to see this was the first year Ferrari moved to the new, more vibrant shade of red. This of course going with the full Marlboro livery. Now in my diecast car, it seems when the Marlboro decals were applied, it was then sprayed with a clear coat to seal in the decals. Unfortunately, when the clear coat dried, it cracked. Now, it's not noticeable from certain angles or from a distance, but it's definitely there. I don't know if you can even see it from this angle, but throughout the video, I'm sure you're going to notice it. Design details. It retains the V10 engine, making somewhere between 725 and 750 horsepower, revving well over 16,000 RPM. Despite being the 1996 chassis underneath, the car looks dramatically different. The biggest difference is the entire nose section. Obviously this is a high nose design, which means all three elements get direct airflow to the entire width of the front wing. This is more surface area, which means more downforce. It also means that the airflow coming through under the nose here and past the front wing will now go underneath the car, which is hugely beneficial. If we take a look underneath the car, we can see the single keel design, which is this part of the chassis here. It's also what the lower wishbone is attached to. Now, this huge cavity of space, which is encapsulated by the double barge board design, which resembles a lot like the 1996 car. I wish these were painted, but they're not. Um, anyways, that big area, all that airflow past the rear wing is now going to come uh, to the sides of the keel and hit this upper part of the floor above the plank right in here. I don't know if I can get show you this very well. Okay, anyways, you get the point. Right on top here. That area is going to become a very high pressure area, meaning a tremendous amount of downforce. And then from there, the airflow that went past the keel here is then going to flow to the side, which then goes to this uh, upper step of the floor which then flows towards the rear diffuser, which it helps energize it, meaning more airflow through it and more downforce, okay? Also, you can see all those cracks I was talking about earlier. The side pods were another area of significant change. Even though the radiators themselves stayed in the same basic location, the bodywork now flowed air directly into the side pods, which means better cooling. The side winglet has been moved a little bit lower compared to the F310. This is a better design because the airflow is now going to stay attached along the upper surface of the side pod and hit directly onto the winglet here. Also, the airflow will stay again attached through this area, through this radius, and the air is going to move through that spot here, this coke bottle zone that we talked about in the last video, which again makes the rear diffuser more efficient. The rear of the car retains much of the F310 design, which it still has these boards that attach to the rear wing. This car still has a three element upper portion of the rear wing and a two element portion of the bottom. Unfortunately, with this die cast model, there are no slot gaps in the rear wing, the winglets, or the front wing. The diffuser received some small changes compared to the 96 car, but small changes can make a big difference. 
I should mention that Ferrari ran the Goodyear tires, as in 1997, Bridgestone came into Formula 1 creating a tire war. This meant much more aggressive tire compounds and faster speeds. Unfortunately, this was the last season for slick tires, at least for the time being, and also a goodbye to the gold BBS wheels, which everybody loved. So with the faster tires and all the design changes, the F310B was about two seconds faster than its predecessor, and enough for Schumacher to challenge for the championship right down to the last race. Now if you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe for future videos, and thanks for watching.